I am going to share with you four soft skills every Flutter developer should have. Working with others or teamwork, communication, accountability, and time management. So let's get started with the first one, which is working with others or teamwork. So if you have worked in a Flutter developer job or any type of job, you definitely have worked with other people. So it is no different as a Flutter developer. So for example, to build an app, you probably have to work with designers and project managers and also other Flutter developers too. So if you have not gone through like internships or work experience as a Flutter developer, then I would suggest to in order for you to improve your soft skills in working with other people, you can ask your friend. So find a couple of your buddies and then discuss on an app idea. Then discuss who is the business person, the design person, and obviously you will be the tech person, a Flutter developer. However, if you have not worked with anyone before, don't worry, you have GitHub for that. So you can contribute to open source by creating an issue if there is a bug or create a pull request if you manage to resolve the bug or help migrating the packages to now safety man. I will really need your help so that everyone can benefit. And the thing is some Flutter developer job requires you to have this kind of skills where you need to do some pull requests and also some code reviews as well. So contributing to open source will really help you get experience as a developer, whether you're a Flutter developer or not. And you will definitely have discussions and arguments about certain topic like, for example, which state management to use. However, having different points of views adds to the diversity of ideas. So this is consistent with a study that shows people from different cities created better research papers than those who come from the same place. So get your Flutter buddies, go through an internships or just contribute to open source and that's when you actually learn on how to work with other people. So the second thing is communication. As different opinions are being brought up on which state management to use, communication can either make a discussion productive or not. So you might think that adding your perspective towards a discussion would help, but I will give a little bit of a different perspective. Why not just try listening to the discussion instead? So by listening to the discussion, you can understand where the discussion is going and what the priorities are. So is having a discussion of state management the main problem or is it having to maintain a large code base and also not really refactored code base the problem? So that's why I feel that listening is actually a very important skill. Then when your product manager were to ask you why you need time to refactor your code, rather than focusing on building new features, how would you answer? That's where your communication skills and your decision-making skills actually comes in. So would you say some technical jargon that confuses them, oh, I need to have some state management to work on with my isolates, and then your <laughs> project manager will probably get confused. Or would you try to explain as simple as possible? So for example, your project manager don't think that refactoring your code is a priority, but for yourself, you think it is. So you probably want to give an example to help your project manager or any stakeholders to better understand by giving a simple example. Would you write in a taxi that is well maintained or something that looks like it's going to break any time and they are still not convinced. And then you might ask another hypothetical situation. Which do you think would likely get into an accident? A taxi that is well maintained or something that looks like it's going to break any time? So having these kind of simple examples actually help them understand your perspective because for a code base, they are not coders themselves. But if you were to put the example or analogy of a code base as a car, then they might have some sort of relatability and understanding towards your situation. So therefore, communicating by listening first and explaining as simple as possible can really affect your relationship for the better or for the worse. So the third thing is accountability. No, I'm not talking about your accounts that you have not updated your password that I know of, but 
this is where it can get scary. As a new Flutter developer in a job, you have the highest chance of making a mistake. Scratch that. If you are a new developer in a job, you have the highest chance of making a mistake. So on the flip side, this is where you actually will learn a lot too. So when you make a mistake, no matter how big or small it is, you should take ownership of it. So by taking ownership, meaning that, sorry guys, I effed up. Sorry guys, I made a bug and now our app is not working. This shows that you are honest in your work and you have nothing to hide. So use this mistake to analyze what went wrong and also to fix the problem. And a bonus tip for you guys is to document the error as well. So this will not only help your future you when you come across the same bug or problem, but your other colleagues, whether they are Flutter developers or developers themselves. So remember, if you're a junior developer or if you, even if you're a senior developer or whatnot, you're just human and we all make mistakes. It's okay. So lastly, the fourth soft skill is time management. So multitasking is a myth. If you think you can multitask, there is no study that shows that multitasking is actually productive. So with that said, I found a way to actually manage my time using the Pomodoro technique. So for those who don't know what's a Pomodoro, so a Pomodoro is basically where you set a time to work and you set a time to rest. So for example, for myself, I actually work for one hour. So I do focused work, very little to no distraction. And then after that one hour of work, I will rest for 15 minutes. So this has been really effective for me as I know what I should focus on. So if I see that I reach to an hour, then I will take a break. So at the same time, you actually let your brain to relax. So when you come back to work, you feel a little bit more refreshed and you actually can be more productive. So I used this app that is called Clockify. So it can be on your web browser or it can be inside your desktop as well. And it really helps me to track the time that has passed. And I could actually also label the time that I'm doing right now. And then the next thing of managing your time is to actually focus on the task that is a high priority. So for example, you have a couple of tasks that hypothetically includes building a new button and also you need to fix a bug. So which one would you choose? If you were to ask me, I love to answer this. This really depends. If you were to ask your project manager or someone in charge, if the new button is very, very important, and then they replied, yes, then ask how often does the bug happens or check how often the bug happens. So if the bug happens once a week, then you could focus your energy to building the new button. However, if the situation is that the bug is happening every single day, then it also causes users to actually uninstall your app, then prioritize fixing the bug. So therefore, it really depends on your situation. So in summary, having experience working in a team, having to communicate your ideas simply, taking ownership of your mistakes and having to focus on the most important tasks will make you a professional Flutter developer. So that's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down if any soft skills that you think is very useful to be as a Flutter developer. So stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.